everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to a new series on my channel called TGI Friend Day. So I just wanted to get on and do a little chat with different bookish friends. They may be booktube friends, Instagram uh, friends, anything. So the first guest that we have today is one of my very, very best bookish friends. And I'm so excited to chat with you and thank you for joining. <laughs> so go ahead and introduce yourself. My name's Sarah. I am from the Bookish Knitter on YouTube. And yeah, that's pretty much about <laughs> and Instagram. We'll get into more about me, I'm sure. Yeah. You're on Instagram too. And yeah, I am on Instagram as well as the Bookish Knitter. Yes. Yeah. You're really like up in your Instagram game. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> so first, what got you into reading? Was it a person, a book? What got you into reading? My dad. Uh, well, I come from a bookish family. My dad always read, my mom always read. So we were ingrained in it. When you grew up in that kind of household, mm -hmm. you just, you become a reader. Yeah. And, you know, dad was reading books to me when I was far too, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea when I was two. You know, like oh I didn't gosh. grasp any of it, but it was yeah. more that time spent together. Yep. And then as I got older, um, my parents would get me like the Babysitter's Club books mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then, so I, I don't remember not being a reader. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. To be honest. Yeah, I like. I feel like Ainsley might be that way, but I don't know, buddy. Because like with her, I was like, like I would read out loud my books to her just so she would like hear the rhythm and that kind of stuff. And now she loves it, but I don't do any of that with Annie. So <laughs> <laughs> there's um, still time. There's still time. Yeah, yeah she's, she's down. <laughs> so why'd you start a booktube? Why did I start booktube? I had been on YouTube before for many years doing a knitting podcast, hence the name The Bookish Knitter. Yep. And I liked it, but it was just, I wasn't enjoying it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. the, the culture had changed. And I had been starting to watch a lot of booktube and I thought, I'd really like to do this. But at the time, there were not the romance readers like there are now. Yeah. And I really was, what I felt was like really a big fish out of water, but I thought I'm just gonna stick with it. And now all of a sudden we've got romance readers and you know, adult yeah. book readers coming out of the woodwork, which is What's fantastic. This? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, how long have you been on BookTube? Uh, I will be five years on January 2nd, 2021. Really? Oh, yeah. how exciting. Yeah, yeah. We need to do something big for that. <laughs> I know, I'm going to have to do something like, yeah. you know, big, That's huge, really like... exciting. <laughs> so if you guys know Sarah, you know that she is the queen of Harlequin and just romance in general. Like, yes, it, yeah, she's got quite the stash. So I want to know, how did you get into that? Like, so your dad was reading to you. I, I don't think he was reading Harlequin, was no. he? No. <laughs> so, so how did, sure no. <laughs> how did you go from that to uh, romance and Harlequin? <laughs> I, <laughs> that would be started, something to see. I know, right? Actually, a funny, very quick story. When my mom yeah. had her stroke and she was in the hospital and she couldn't read, my dad was reading to her the Janet Ivanovich, really? Stephanie Plum books. Aww. And the nurses would come in and he'd say, we're getting to the steamy part if you want to join us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that, that's dad. true love. That's yeah, true love. Right, right. <laughs> Sarah's dad is like, I wish I would have met him. Uh, he was awesome. Yeah. But um so it was actually his sister. Um, my aunt worked for, she was head of payroll for the Toronto Public Library. And she used to, mm -hmm. can, could go down to the area where they throw out old books and she'd grab bags of them. And they'd mm -hmm. be mostly the Harlequins because for anyone who knows anything about Harlequins, they release new ones every single month. So they do have a shelf life. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a year old book, they just don't sure. have room to keep putting six new books every series on the shelf every yeah. month. So they throw all these books out. She would bring them home. So my grandmother and I used to read them. And uh, I actually at first kind of thought, oh, no, these aren't really my thing. You know, I'm not yeah. into romance. I was reading Anne Rice at the time and uh, V.C. Andrews and, you know. And then as I got into my early 20s, I thought, okay. And then I started to pick up romance. And yeah. they, they were, to be honest, they were cheap. And they were easy to get your, my hands on. So that's yeah. kind of why I started with those. Yeah, but yeah. I've. Clearly, they've grown into a love for me. Mm -hmm. So who are some of your favorite authors? Oh, gosh. With Harlequin yeah, or just in general? In general. <laughs> in general. Jill Shalvis, um, Eloisa James, Julia Quinn, Susan Wiggs. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, who else? Oh, I really love Maisie Yates. She okay. is fantastic. I, I mean, I just, I love romance and I love I love it when they're a little bit tongue in cheek in a way. Yeah. I don't like super serious, 
And even with the historical romance, like I'm rereading through the Bridgerton series right now by mm-hmm. Julia Quinn, they are so tongue in cheek and so funny. Like yeah. I'm laughing in parts and you think this is not what pe- people picture as a historical romance. Yeah. I need to try that series. I think. I think it's a good. It does get steamy, bear yeah. in mind, but yeah. it's still really good. <laughs> yeah, I need to try it because I've got it in my head that it's one thing, and it's it's not. I know. No, but, no, they're great, yeah. and the characters, and you know, it, they're just it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So, if you had to pick a subgenre of romance, what would you pick? You can only read probably, one. What would it be? Just one. Yeah. Does no, does does. Actually, does holiday count as a subgenre? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, we're filming this on what November seventh, and I think we are both yes. knee deep in the holiday romance. Oh, I just yes. bought four more from Indigo Chapters up here, <laughs> our Barnes and Noble. I'm waiting for them to arrive in the mail. <laughs> oh, and you just bought one from Walmart, like literally. Yeah, and I just got one from Walmart, the new Lori Wild. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but if I could pick that as a subgenre, I love any time of year. I mean, especially now. Yeah. You know, my Christmas tree's going up next week and I'm mm-hmm. super into the holiday season, but I could read them all year round because they just make me happy at the end of and the day. And they're just so cozy. And exactly. Yeah, and exactly. And heartwarming. You know? And even if they're smutty, like <laughs> Christmas smut's okay for some reason. <laughs> like, you just end up on the naughty list. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. So what are your favorite tropes? Oh, favorite tropes. I do love a good friends to lovers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've talked sweethearts to lovers. Is, yep. Yes. If it's done right. <laughs> yeah. You mean like childhood sweethearts? Yeah. Like childhood yes. sweethearts. I think is adorable. Yeah. I do too. Um, age gap. I don't mind as long as it's not perceived as dirty. Like yeah. the whole daddy kink thing is not my forte. Yeah. Yeah. But I just finished the new Maisie Yates and there was a 10 year age difference, Mm -hmm. but it was done well. Yeah. Like, you know, it wasn't creepy old man. That's, you know what I mean? There there is a fine line. Well, and I feel like, tell me if you agree, like that there's a certain age, like when they're like 17, 18, 19 age gaps, a little weird, but Mm -hmm. once they're like 20, 20, you know, in their twenties, then yeah, thirties, that's not weird. That's not like fetish it, fetishy. No, no. Not that no. there's anything wrong with that, if that is your thing, but... No, 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 no. Yeah. And I, I'm not passing any judgment. It's just not my personal forte, right. my personal thing. And like the Maisie Yates book, he'd known her since she was six and he oh, was really? 16. So it, it was cute. Like they showed some yeah. of their relationship when, when she was little, um, yeah. you know, but then as it got older, like he, then he didn't start noticing her until she was in her early 20s. <laughs> so, it was appropriate. so it was a little bit different, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Did okay. <laughs> yeah. My parents are nine years apart. And so it's oh, like, wow. so many times I'm like, dad, she was like five and you were in high school. <laughs> like that's, that's weird. But yeah, they didn't mean till they were older, obviously, but well, yeah. yeah. But, or the book, the time traveler's wife. Mm-hmm. Well, I like the story. I had major issues with that. Yeah. I was going back to look at her when she was a kid. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. do you listen to <laughs> Ben Folds at all? Do you know who that is? Do I read? No. No, do you listen to him? It's, he's oh, no, 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 no. It, there's a really old song, and I can't even think of what it's called. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll mention it somewhere, but it's, it's like the exact same concept, and I heard it around the time that I read The Time Traveler's Wife, and it's like, yeah, all this stuff of like, I'm watching you when you're little, and I'm like, mm, you're like that's uh, weird. No. Too much. <laughs> too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are your least favorite tropes? Accidental? accidental pregnancy yep because women in romance novels are the most fertile women ever <laughs> ever and everybody <laughs> wants babies and it's oh just yeah and and that up. i think it's not necessarily a trope per se but the fact that the books have to end with mm-hmm. oh we got married and oh we're having a baby yeah no, they don't <laughs> yep yep yeah yeah mm. and secret babies any i'm yeah. not i guess i mean I'm not a mom, but I still like kids in books, but when it's done, and, and like I was just talking about the Maisie Yates book at the end, they did something together without protection. And I'm just thinking, don't go there. Please yes. don't go there. And they didn't. Spoiler oh, alert. Really? Anybody there. They didn't go there. I was shocked. That's amazing. <laughs> I was I absolutely like shocked. <laughs> you, I can count on one hand the number of times. Right. Gone there. Right. Because if they, <laughs> if they like explicitly mention protection, you're like, yes, there you go. Baby's absolutely. coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it was well done. 
what do you, what do you wish there was more of in the romance community, booktube community? Um, well, let's start with what do you wish there was more of? Like what, what types of books do you wish there were more of? What types of books? Yeah. For sure. Like I just said, I'm not a huge fan of kids in books, but I think mm -hmm. there are ways it's done well. And I would love to see more books about parents with kids who have special needs. Mm -hmm. I just read last month, the Sher A Sheriff's Star by McKenna Lee, and mm -hmm. it was about a little girl with Down syndrome. I loved at it. Christmas. It was the most charming. Yes. And it, yeah. it takes place at the tail end of, like right at the end, Christmas happens. It's not really a Christmas book, but okay. it was delightful. And yeah. it was so nice seeing a struggle that you know what I mean and I'd love to see more romance novels as well with married couples yes because as you well know as a as a as a wife yep happily ever after does not end on that it wedding is day not sunshine and rainbows no it's no. like happily ever after <laughs> is the wedding day and then it, everything after is like we're like the after happens. yeah because yeah. it's true a lot of couples struggle later on you know whether through financial reasons or if they have a kid with special needs mm. or they can't get pregnant, there yeah. could be a whole host of reasons. And I think that that would make things a lot more realistic mm -hmm. too. I think that's what it is at the end of the day is more realism within romance. Yeah. It's not just the knight in shining armor on the white horse, but yeah. you know, dealing with diapers and dealing with in-laws <laughs> and dealing with, you know, yes. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which thankfully I, I still think America needs to move to Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> October is a much better time for Thanksgiving. It is. We had it outside last year. Good yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and now you're ready for Christmas. There's nothing between you and Christmas. Yeah, but exactly. Exactly. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think with like with realism, I feel like it's harder than to get a happily ever after though, because truthfully, like there never is a happily ever after. Like in the end we die. Like, yeah. you know, which is a concept that like first entered my head when I read Beach Read, because he <laughs> says that he's like, you know, life is full of ups and downs and then we die. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. like a happily ever after, like I am much more a fan of happy for now. Yes. And I think that's like what we're talking about is yeah. happy for now. And, and yeah, seeing yourself represented, like there are so many parents and things with um, special needs children and so many mm -hmm. marriages that well, 50% end in divorce. Like mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. let's, let's see some of that struggle. I, I want to see I, it. I, me too. And I just think it would just be so much nicer. And like you said, there's individual, but there's parts of your life that you go through. Like I'm struggling through, you know, my husband and I are struggling through whatever the issue is right mm -hmm. now. So let's get the happily for now at the end. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I'm like, I would be interesting, interested to see. So all sorts of COVID smut has come out. Yeah. We know that. Will there be any COVID books like about, Hey, my husband got laid off in this time and yes. like, Hey, this year was bananas. And it was so hard being trapped in, in the house with my husband and kids all the mm -hmm. time. Not mm -hmm. that I'm speaking from experience, <laughs> but <laughs> not at all, <laughs> not at all. Um, but like, where are those books? That's what, you know, and like, while we're still in it, I think it would be kind of weird to release a book like that. Cause we're all yeah. kind of still in it, but um, like, I hope those books come. And for me, like, that's the trend that I kind of want to see in, in publishing is like, yeah, some like, okay, let's use this and make smut, but then also make like what people actually felt going through this. I saw one, I actually got one on that galley. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there is, it's a COVID story mm -hmm. and it's a chick lit novel. I think it's set in the UK okay. and they live in an apartment and yeah. she, they live like above each other or something oh, and it's yeah. their love story. But while they're in, but they're therapy. socially distant. I know. Like lean out the window like, and be like, hi, yes. you look nice in that different set of pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm itching to read it because I think it's going to be yeah. really delightful. And I think, you know, what you know like you said, we're getting the COVID smut and, and I, I yeah. hate that we're coining that as a term. Yeah. But it'll be nice to see the more realistic side of it. Yes. You know? Well, and like so many people have talked about like all these COVID babies and stuff. And I'm like, clearly they have better hygiene and no additional kids. Like this has been the least sexy time of my life. You no, know, right? Like, uh, no, no. COVID, like all standards have gone out the door. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So what would you like to see more of in booktube? In booktube. Um, I, 
I think we're starting to see a lot of it now. Um, a lot different genres being discussed. The way I've always looked at booktube in a way has been like a bookstore. Like you walk in and you've got your section for romance, and you've yes. got your section for horror, and you've got, but the thing is, is that that bookstore, that little, is dominated by YA. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with YA. I do like the occasional YA contemporary. Mm -hmm. But I think as booktubers, and I'd like to see older booktubers too. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, yeah. we're getting, and there's, and I'm not saying if you're young, don't do it. But if you're older and you feel like you want to participate, there's nothing stopping you. Yeah. And I'd love to see more women. I'm in my early 40s. Mm -hmm. And there are only a few of us that I know of at my yeah. age that are talking yeah. about, you know, books. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We matter too, dang it. That's right. But, yeah. And men too. More men. Yeah. I would like to see more guys talking about whatever it is that you read. Like, you know, I think I keep trying to encourage my husband to do it, but he just doesn't read enough. <laughs> yeah. That would be yeah. so fun. Or at it least if be. he popped on your channel. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I've seen a couple, a couple couples that have channels mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's fun. That's just something different, but yeah, that's yeah. an, I like your like analogy of a bookstore, mm -hmm. especially because I, I get so many recommendations and I'm like, yeah, I often watch booktube with thrift books open. <laughs> oh yeah. So that's I, a thing. I, I have a note, the, the note app on my phone oh, is like, constantly yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's rough. That's it a, prior to booktube, I would have never said that I like cared about owning books because you've got the whole library. Why do you need to own them? And now I've got books surrounding me and I'm I like, know <laughs> I don't, I still don't know why do I need to own them, but I do. They're I just know. so pretty. They are. And like, if they're good, you're like, Oh, remember when I read that? And, yes. You know, I, I yep. it makes me happy. And I'm like, when the library closed, it's like, it's okay. I'm covered. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I can start charging people to come in and borrow right, my books. Right, right, <laughs> So, okay. Up to you if you answer this, but what have been your favorites and least favorite books of the year? If you don't want to answer this because you're going to do end of the year stuff, you can tell me. I am going to do year. end of the year stuff, but I mean, I can mention it here too. It's not okay. a problem. At the end of the year, a lot of people tend to do their top, you know, 20 books or whatever. I yeah. just talk about my top my my books that I got that I gave five stars to because as you well know mm -hmm. five star reads do not come easy yes, for me. I know <laughs> yeah me either um but recently without looking at my list I would have to say at the beginning of the year I read I owe you one by Sophie Kinsella which mm -hmm. broke my heart for reasons yep um and that's a perfect time perfect book thing isn't it that was that and that yeah. and I talked about that numerous times that if I hadn't read that book then I don't mm -hmm. know if I'd given it five stars, but it was about her losing her dad. And I literally two weeks earlier had lost my own father. Mm -hmm. So it was the perfect storm, but it was such a, such a well done book. But most recently, if I'd have to pick like one that really stood out to me, and I was just saying, I'm not a YA reader, was yeah. Pumpkin Hits by Ray Morrell. I it's thought so it good. was so charming. It is so good. So charming. Oh my yes. God. I loved it. I did too. And like, I had heard about it obviously. Cause what it was. Yeah. 2018 came out last year it was 19 okay yeah but yeah and I read it this year too and it was just so good such a oh, joy yeah. it was that perfect quick little book and then the other one I think both you and I read was that call me maybe by Cara Barstone that one was super no, cute I the audio I have not read it yet oh I you haven't oh okay no. sorry my mom did my bad yes. my bad I know you're gonna borrow it next uh, yes that book was so cute and it's it's the perfect audio book yeah. Because you're getting all the sounds. Like if she, when she's sitting in her car, mm -hmm. you can hear the cars going by, you yeah. know, you can hear them typing on their computers. It was, and they, I don't want to give anything away, but it yeah. was just delightful. Absolutely. Delightful. Cute. Yeah. 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 That Carly Jepsen song in your head every time you picked it up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, now, like all I listen to is like kids music and stuff. And I'm like, I'm really thankful because those like catchy pop tunes just yeah, never, yeah. Leave, never leave. <laughs> so what, what was your least favorite of this year? Verity by Colleen Hoover. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> I only said that because I'm here with you. Yeah. No, that wasn't my, that probably didn't make my least favorite. It definitely made the bottom <laughs> of the list at some point. <sighs> but I'll be honest, I... And okay, I just had one, I don't DNF very often either, Yeah. but I just had one, was it just the other day I was talking to you guys that I DNF'd a book and it was by um, Jude Devereaux yes. and it was called, I think twice in, twice in, 
twice in your life or I can't remember the title of it now but it was being billed as like an Outlander which I love Outlander is one of my favorite series of all time yeah and it kind of was where this guy dies and he gets sent back to earth because she's I don't even know how to explain it I was completely confused by the second chapter yeah. I'm like I don't even care yeah and I DNF'd it because yeah. I just I, it's a 12 hour long audiobook I wasn't here for it I'm yep. sorry <laughs> have you read other Jude Devereaux I've read one other and I didn't like that one either so maybe she's just on offer for me so I picked up the mulberry tree by her okay. um and I remember I was reading that when I was in the hospital with Annie so like mm -hmm. I and so I was like well maybe that's why but I tried it physically I tried it on audio <laughs> I just could not. And so I, I like never DNF and I DNF that one too. I, I just think she's not for me. Yeah. I, and that's fine. Not every yeah. author is for everybody, you know? Yeah. She's another one of those old school that, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's been around forever. And it's funny when I looked at her, um, author pick on, uh, Goodreads, she yeah. looks really familiar. Is she a pen oh, really? name or something else? Because I thought she was, I tried to Google search and I couldn't find anything. Maybe I've just looked at her picture before. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't looked at that. But she, yeah, she wasn't an author. I mean, the writing wasn't bad. I just, no. Yeah. <laughs> just no, just no. It's okay. There are so many good authors that. <laughs> oh, I know. I got know. a fan base and it's not that. Yep. Yep. What are you currently reading? What am I currently reading? I am currently reading, um, oh, A Surprise Christmas Wedding by Philippa Ashley, which is a UK chiclet novel oh good it is oh it's so cute yeah it's about this couple at the very beginning they're they get engaged and this is in the prologue and then he splits out he decides oh, i made a big mistake we can't get married oh so now it's a year later she's working at this estate in in the lake district in england and he shows up with his new fiance and they're going to get married at this estate that she works at Ooh. but he does not want his fiance to know that she is his ex-fiance Hey, yeah, kind of messy. So <laughs> it is and then she's and now she's kind of falling for um has a crush on the caretaker of the okay. estate and he's got a black labrador retriever it's just so it's cute. so british too because i read yeah. a lot of uk authors because i love them yeah and some of them are a lot more british than others yeah and i think people who re read them know exactly what i'm talking about yes you know, this one is just full of slang. And yeah. I can imagine there'd be a lot of people who wouldn't understand it necessarily. But yeah. I grew up in a household where my mom watches Coronation Street. If you ever, I don't know <laughs> if it's a Canadian thing or what. I've never heard it, of it. It's, but... a, it's a British drama that's been on the air for like 70 years. My mom's been watching it since really? she was 16. Is and that... it's that very, um, it's that London accent, but they have a lot of like, they're going out for fishing, you know, whatever, or they're wearing their jumper or they're mm -hmm. going to their flat. And it's, I'm so yeah. used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I was just, what was, I was watching or listening some, to something that they were saying they got addicted to BBC dramas and they watch it with the subtitles on. Cause I, like my grandma watches them and I've tried to, and I, I'm like, I can't, I can't get into it because I can't understand, but with subtitles, yeah. it's almost yeah. like reading a book. Oh, I used to grow up um, watching those BBC shows, the Are You Being Served and stuff and Faulty Towers. Oh yeah. God, they were delightful. My grandfather used to watch them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't have cable anymore, but I want to like try it because I just think there's so much more, like everything sounds better in a British accent. <laughs> and I think the thing is too, is that being Canadian, I think we're a bit more immersed in British yeah. culture than you guys are because you guys chose to leave. Whereas yeah. like, no, no, we'll stick around. It's fine. Put the queen right. on our money. <laughs> right. Right. Which now look where that got us. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And I was talking to Karen from Rather Be Reading um, in Australia. They get a lot of the British stuff, you know, yeah. a lot of the... they're, a, they're a colony as well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> another reason. I think you'd that. like them though. Knowing yeah. what you like to read, I really do think that you'd like. I think so too. Sure. And the UK covers of everything are so much better. Like they're just so cute and they, sweet. I, I don't know. know what it is, what they're doing over there and not here. Know. Well, that's why I'm like, so I, it's a marketing reason. So why are, you know, like what, what are they do to get those good covers? I want to know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like I, I don't know what it is and why they feel the need to do a different cover in the UK as opposed to yeah. the US. But I think it's, it's definitely a different market. It's a different type of reader, even though the yeah. book is the same. Yeah. It's being marketed to a different, you know, demographic essentially. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. If anybody is watching this in the publishing industry, let us know. <laughs> Cause like <laughs> I just live for the UK covers and thank God for book depository that I can yeah. order them. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, so I'm reading a series right now and it's like a secret TBR. So whatever, but I have one in mass market paperback and I'm so annoyed by it. Which oh, I, I know. Never used to be a thing to me. I'm like, I'm reading for the content. I don't care yep. what the book looks like. And you and I both love like well-loved books. Yep. And I'm like, oh, I really want to read by it. <laughs> I don't know why it's bothering me, but it is. <laughs> um, okay. So is that all you're reading? Um, I haven't started yet, but I'm actually going to start a, um, what do you call it? A true crime novel Ooh. called Murder in the Bayou by, I think it's Ethan Brown. And it's about a serial killer in Louisiana, but it's for nonfiction November. Yeah. So yeah, I'm in the mood for a little murder and mayhem before I really get into the Christmas. Stuff. Yeah. Well, you got to balance. It's like you've got right? sugary sweet and then a little bit of crazy. Exactly. Is that on audio? Yeah, it's going to be on audio. And, yeah. uh, and I am, like I said, rereading through the Bridgerton series. I'm on book two, The yeah. Count Nine. Yeah. Which is Anthony's story, which I love. I feel like <laughs> true crime on audio is like really scary. Yes. Yeah. It's, really it's only six hours long. So my goal oh, is good. to get it done today. And I just oh, want to kind of yep. get it finished. Yep. I read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And I read yep. that with my eyes, but um, <laughs> it's, it's set in Holcomb, Kansas, which I don't know where that is. I think it's Western Kansas somewhere, but I'm like, okay. this, it, this is too much. Like I, I could not deal yeah. with it on audio because it's <laughs> like too close to home. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Nope. I always used to watch, um, what was it? Un was it Unsolved Mysteries? Oh no, America's Most Wanted. It used to be oh, on Sunday nights when yes. I was a kid. And my brother and I would watch it together. I don't know why we were like little. Yes. We'd watch it and they'd always say at the end, and the perpetrator was last seen heading for the Canadian border. And Richard and I would be like, ah, no, you know? no, go back. We don't want you. <laughs> why do we do yeah. this to ourselves? Because <laughs> yeah. I, I am a scaredy cat. I scare relatively easily. So yeah. Well, yeah. my grandma also watched Unsolved Mysteries. I spent a lot of time with her as a kid and she watched Unsolved Mysteries and I'm like, they're interesting, but that in and of itself is terrifying. They're Absolutely. unsolved. Like, where are these people? They are killing people and they are out somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, it could no. be next door. <laughs> like, I need the follow-up of like, and this was solved, which some yeah. you got, but like, and this was, and this person just they caught the guy. Murder. Yeah. Yeah. And everything is hunky dory. You're safe at home. Exactly. <laughs> but that doesn't lovely. happen. I know. I know. So I just like avoid all of that because. Oh, for sure. I have enough yeah. trouble sleeping. I know. So now um, we're going to end with just a rapid fire this or that. Okay. Got okay. it. Uh, yeah. Ebook, audiobook, or, or physical? Ebook. Hardback or paperback? Uh, paperback. Paperback. Um, buy or borrow. Oh, buy. Yeah. Um, quiet or background noise. Background noise. Indoor or outdoor. Indoor. Uh, meet your favorite author or meet your favorite character. Author. Uh, book to film or book to movie. Neither. Neither. I want to know that. Why? I just don't like when they do book to. I don't. I just don't like the adaptation. Just leave it as it is. Although. No, I shouldn't say that. Book to book to TV because I it really looking forward to the Bridgerton series on Netflix. Okay, and the Babysitters Club that was good. That was so well done. I have yeah. to give credit. That was so yeah. well done. Yeah. So, but they're few and far yeah. between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say more, but I'm going to just leave it. At, I agree. Uh, <laughs> classics or new releases? New releases. New book? No new books or never reread. Never read anything mm. new or no new books. What? That's shocking. Yeah, I think so because I've got so much. Yeah. That I would be good for the rest of my life. Just I just would not have to ever watch BookTube again or look at Amazon again or <laughs> yeah. any of that ever again. I just put on blinders. I'm like, I'm just living under my rock with my book. Shut up. I'm going to be in I don't want to hear about it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Standalone or series? Series. Really? I'm yep. learning so much. Like, I feel like <laughs> I know you and I don't. And uh, I am getting into reading series in order, which is something you do and I don't do. And you mm. marathon and I don't. Yes. But I'm marathoning yes. now and I'm like, okay, I kind of see the merits in this now. Yes. Well, it's just so <laughs> nice to get like stuck in that world and just stay. Yes. And, yep. yeah. but the series I'm reading right now is like their, comp their companion novels. And so I feel like there's space for both. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, reading solo or book club? 
You better say book club. <laughs> book club. Yeah. Yeah. Book yeah. Club. Yeah. Again, I feel like there's space for both. You know, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Some books yeah. that I'm like, eh, eh, I don't want. It I is don't fun to discuss a book with other people. I really do yeah. think that. Yeah. Yeah. And like my little introverted soul is kind of liking the online thing, you know? Yeah. So, like I online. Mean, can, they think reading, like you assume reading is a very solitary activity because it is, but it can be very, like you talk, like if you're a book person, it's like you talk to somebody at, at work, oh, have you read this new book or right. your friend or whatever? It, yep. it, that makes it more social, right? Well, and like by very nature, booktube is kind of a book club. Like we want very people- much. We want people to interact and chat with us because we want mm-hmm. to talk about the books we're reading. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So yep. book club, not awesome. to mention book sisters, shameless plug. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So the last and most controversial potentially coffee or tea. Oh, tea. If anybody knows Sarah, this is a silly question. Tea every day. Although all the time. Are, you, are you drinking tea or are you drinking coffee right now? I'm actually drinking a mocha from Starbucks. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Show us the holiday cup. No, this the is the holiday, holiday calendar from David's Tea. Okay. It's the okay. advent. Great. But, but now the for the coffee lovers, Starbucks. show me the holiday cup from Starbucks. This is just the one that they've got. Like, this is just the paper one or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I had to go grocery shopping and I'm like, I deserve a Starbucks this morning. You do. You do. <laughs> I have got mops this afternoon, which means no nap, which means, girl, I'm treating myself. <laughs> on the way it's like that sounds time, lovely <laughs> yeah anytime I sacrifice nap time I'm like that's job. right that's Good right job, mama staying up all day <laughs> you deserve it <laughs> that's right that's right you'll be asleep on the couch by eight but it's fine it's fine don't even worry <laughs> it's all fine uh, well thank you thank you thank you I, You're I could not think of a better person to be the first TGI friend day <laughs> So, um, and thank you guys for watching and yes. find Sarah again, remind us everywhere we can find you. I am on YouTube as the bookish knitter and on Instagram as the bookish knitter. Yep. And we will, I'll link it down below. So you can definitely go find her, friend her, follow her, subscribe, all the things all and the because things. she is perfect. <laughs> so thank you thank again. You. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye everybody.